Hi, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today we're going to be continuing our look at the construction of the studio project, discussing framing. Now where we last left off, we had poured the concrete slab, and in the interim we've backfilled it, we've insulated the perimeter, and we've run our temporary power so that framing can begin. Now it's not easy to get a concrete slab completely level when you pour it, and so the first step before we can put, begin putting walls on top of the slab is to level out the sills. Now the sill plate that we're using for this project is a pressure treated 2x8 sill that overhangs the blue foam on the exterior. The 2x6 exterior walls will then sit inboard of that and then we'll have a flashing detail which we'll discuss in a future video. So step one here is to lay out the plates according to the exterior wall framing. And this is a simple project so there's only a few walls altogether. Um, the end walls are inset for the storage areas and then what we do Next is figure out how far out of level it is, and so that's what they're doing here with the transit. And then Mike is going around and fastening down the plates, and then they'll shim those to get them to the correct elevation. And Mike's being careful to protect the concrete slab because that's our finished floor. Now, next step here is to begin framing the exterior walls, and they do that uh, laying down on the concrete slab, and then they'll tilt them up into place on the pressure-treated sills, which they had just set. Now we're using advanced framing techniques here. Advanced framing basically seeks to optimize material usage in any project. We're using 24 inch uh, stud spacing for this and that allows us to put more insulation in the exterior walls and use less overall framing material. We're also using single top plates and we're using engineered lumber for the headers for doors and windows. And you'll see they're putting those window headers into place here. And they have blue foam in the center to separate them thermally from the exterior. And that improves the thermal performance of the wall. You can see they're placing insulation in the corners here. And then they'll begin sheathing the wall as the next step. Now the sheathing acts as the bracing for the wall studs. And you can see there's a span rating there of 3216. And that just describes the span rating for roofs versus uh, floors. Now we've tilted the wall up into place here and they're beginning to frame the east wall. We're looking at the west wall standing vertically now. They've braced that into place and they're doing the same procedure we just looked at for the west wall with the east wall. And this one has a large header which they're forming up here. You can see Josh is working on that and he's putting insulation there again to thermally isolate it from the exterior. Now this wall is quite a bit heavier because of that door header. We have that large sliding glass door that sits on the east face and so they need a couple more guys to help them tilt this one into place and you'll see that happen here shortly. The single top plates um, and the advanced framing techniques, they're not standard framing techniques but they actually are more efficient in using materials and they're becoming more widely adopted here. Uh, you can see what they're doing at this point is they're basically plumbing the walls. So they're using the bracing then to tilt the walls and get it exactly where they want it to be, exactly plumb. And they'll come and frame the, uh, ex the other two exterior partition walls here, framing the storage area and the wood storage area at the far end. They're just sort of fastening all of the walls final into place. Now you can see they framed up the gable ends here and we'll sort of fast forward a little bit. Everything has been sheathed and the next step here is to begin setting the ridge pole where we'll set our roof rafters. Now they've done something smart here. They've basically used the local lumber yard's boom truck to lift this really heavy beam into place. So our ridge pole is what our, all of our roof rafters will frame in, um, into and they've used the boom truck here. Instead of having them drop the beam off just on the job site, they've had them get the boom truck close enough so that they could just lift it into place for them. Now the next step is to begin cutting the bird's mouths for the rafter tails, and the rafter tails will form the knife edge of the eave. You can see that on the existing house there in the background. And then they begin fastening those to the ridge pole, which we just set using the boom truck. And so we have a nice crisp knife edge line there that we can begin setting our roof sheathing on next. Now this view is from the inside and we're looking at the ridge pole. They've cut the, a V notch out of the bottom of the ridge pole. And we did that so that we can have the sheetrock meet at a perfect intersection at the peak there. You can see the framing for the skylights. We've cut the vertical leg down so it lets actually more light in from the skylight. And you're looking at them setting the last few of the rafters in place before they begin adding the roof sheeting. And on top of the roof sheeting, then we're going to place our engineered uh, felt membrane. Uh, for the walls, we're using a 30-pound roofing felt, which is a heavy-duty roofing felt. And then also, because it's an open rain screen, 
joint, uh, we'll be using a product called Vapro Shield, and we'll get into that in a future video. Uh, this is basically right before Christmas, so these guys are trying to wrap up the roof sheathing, and then they'll put on the Feltex uh, membrane for the roof, and you can see the green membrane is the high temperature ice and water shield that must go underneath the metal roofing. We're only using that at the, the perimeter there. Uh, where they're standing, we'll be using the Feltex, which is the engineered felt. Um, and that basically allows us to dry the building in and continue on with the other works, work uh, of other trades that will be happening inside, the electrical rough-in and eventually the insulation. The metal roofing is on site. There's metal flashing to happen at the base and the siding will start going on uh, in the near future. The windows are here. The skylights are here. So lots of progress to report on in, in the coming weeks. I hope you'll stay tuned and keep watching. Thanks.